Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to use a green screen with your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now, I'm often surprised when I hear that people can't or won't use a green screen on a Mac because maybe they can't get one or can't afford one or they don't know how to use it. Green screens are actually really cheap and you could do it in a variety of different ways and they're really easy to use. You can use them in a few situations. For instance, I'm going to show you how to use them in iMovie, but you could also use them for regular online meetings like in Zoom or even in FaceTime. Even in situations where there is no green screen functionality, a green screen can really help improve the quality of your video in a meeting. So first let's talk about what a green screen is. All a green screen is is a field of green behind you while you're on camera. It doesn't have to be some sort of special screen. It can be something very simple. For instance, if you want a really cheap one, you can just get a piece of green poster board. I can search here on Amazon and find a variety of green poster boards, but you could probably find one at a nearby store. A lot of times these are used for school projects. Available in a lot of colors, just get a green one. Anything that is a solid green color will do. So for instance, if you really want to do it cheaply, search for green paper roll. And you're going to find these rolls of green paper used for a variety of reasons, even for wrapping paper, that are super cheap. And you can just tack it to a wall behind you. Don't worry if there's a little bit of a seam. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Just get it as good as you can. And paper works really well because you're not going to get little reflections that you may get, say, on a glossy poster board. Of course, the classic thing to use is a green bed sheet for a cheap green screen. It's hard to find a bright green bed sheet, but if you can, or if you already have one, you can just hang that up behind you. But of course, you can also search for green screen and you're gonna come up with a variety of different things. And they're probably not as expensive as you think. A lot of these are under 40 bucks, sometimes even under 20 bucks, and they even include all the things you need to kind of hang it behind you. Cheaper ones are probably not going to be very durable, but as long as you take care of them, they'll be just fine. For some really good ones that are not that expensive, but are still easy to set up and then put away, search for green screen pop-up. You're going to come up with some of the things that look kind of like this. They allow you to actually set it up really quickly and then they kind of fold in an interesting way and go into a small container that's flat and then you could just hide it behind something when you're not using it. All you really need is a solid field of green behind you. I even know people that just simply paint a wall green if they're going to be using it all the time. Now I'm going to talk about lighting a little later on, but you don't need to really do anything special with lighting if you're just using it for meetings or to create fun videos. Let's talk about using a green screen. I'm going to talk about using it in videos you create and also using it for online meetings. Let's start by talking about videos and in particular I'm going to talk about using iMovie because iMovie's had this functionality built in for a long time. So I've shot some green screen video using the green screen that's always behind me and I did it in QuickTime Player. I just, in QuickTime Player, did a new move of recording and used my Max camera to shoot this. So it's just me with a green screen behind me. Notice my chair is also green. I'll talk about that a little later too. So I've got this video here and you can see I didn't use any special lighting. I actually had all my lighting turned off for this. So you can see what a more typical situation would be like. So everything's not completely easy. It's a little darker here in some of the corners the chair's a slightly different shade of green and all of that. But I've got just a standard video. Now, I'm going to go into iMovie here and I've got a new project. And a mistake a lot of people make that makes it seem like it's hard to use a green screen is that they take the green screen video and they drop it in to iMovie and then find they can't see any way to set this up as green screen video where it cuts out the background. You have to remember in iMovie there are two layers. There's the main video layer and then there's the overlay layer. If you're using green screen, then you want to do that in the overlay layer. After all, something has to show through where the green is. If you're using it in the main layer, there's nothing underneath that. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to bring in another video clip here. And this is just a video clip of a beach. So this is the background video. Now I can put green screen video on top of that. So I'm going to drag in that same video, but I'm not going to put it in the main timeline here. I'm putting it above that other video. So it's the overlay, that second layer. So now you can see I've got the beach there and then the overlay cuts away from that. And now I've got the video of me and then it goes back to the beach. 
I want this to act as a green screen video where wherever it's green, it's transparent and I can see the beach. So with that selected, I want to go to the tool here that's for the video overlay settings. And then I've got several different options. I can cut away which is what it's doing now. It's cutting away to the overlay and then back. I can also choose split screen or picture in picture. But you can see here the second option is green or blue screen. You can do this all with a solid blue screen if you really want. So let's choose the green blue screen here. And now when I move over this section, you can see that where it was green is now transparent and you could see what's behind me. So it's as simple as that. All you need to do is film yourself or an object or anything over a solid field of green and then use it as an overlay in iMovie and set it up to be a green blue screen overlay. Now you can do some adjustments. For instance, notice how since the chair is a different shade, it didn't really cut it out completely. It's only semi-transparent there. That's okay. You've got cleanup tools here. I'm going to use the eraser tool here and I'm going to click where the chair is telling it also cut out this shade of green completely. And as soon as I do that, you can see it works really well. You could also use this tool here to crop. So say if there was an object over here to the left that you don't want included, you can kind of crop it away like that. And you could adjust all four corners so you can kind of just have the section that you if you want telling it to completely ignore everything outside of the section. So that's handy if say you just have a poster board behind you and your video includes lots of other things outside of the green poster board area. And that's all there is to it. Now you've got this green screen video here where you appear to be over this background video instead of what's really behind you. And of course there are green screen functions in other video editing apps as well. Just about anyone will have one. Certainly Final Cut Pro and other apps like that are going to have some sort of green screen function you can use just like this. Sometimes it's called green screen. Sometimes it's called chroma key. Now you can also use a green screen to make the video of you during meetings better. For instance, in Zoom, you can use the settings here to have the background behind you cut out. Now this will work even if you don't have a green screen. You could have a potted plan and a bookcase and a picture and all of that and it will use an algorithm to figure out who you are versus the background and cut everything else out. All you need for that is to go to the background and effects section here and select a background. So I can select like this standard background here. Now what it's doing is it's trying to figure out what's me, what's the background and cut that out. It's not perfect but it will work and you don't need to set up a green screen. But if you want to improve the video you can put a green screen behind you and the first thing is is it's going to just generally improve. Having just a solid color behind you that doesn't match any color that you've got on you is going to help its algorithm separate you from the background. But Zoom also has this I have a green screen checkbox here. This is under background and effects and settings. And if you check that, it's going to change its algorithm and instead of trying to cut you out from the background, it's simply going to look for the green and cut that out. And now you'll notice that the quality is a lot better in terms of how well it cuts things out. So this is kind of a way to bring your Zoom meeting quality up to the next level. Now this also works with FaceTime. So of course normally in FaceTime it's just a picture of you and whatever's behind you. You can't substitute some sort of background. But if you're doing a presentation, so you're going to share your screen like I'm doing right here, then it is going to actually try to cut you out if you use the smaller like bottom left corner presentation style. And when you can do that, you can see it puts you in a little circle and not only is the circle a different color than what's behind you, but your head kind of pops out from that circle. So it's separating you from the background just like Zoom is doing. Now there's no checkbox to say I'm using a green screen. But by having a green screen behind you, it's going to make it a lot easier for it to cut you out of the background. So even in applications like this where there is no specific green screen function, being in front of a green screen is going to produce a better quality result than being in front of a whole variety of different objects that may be in your office. Now if you want to take your green screen game up to the next level, you want to think about lighting. So if you've got light in front of you making you look good and you've got a green screen behind you, one of the things that light is going to do is cast a shadow of you onto the green screen. So you're going to have two different shades of green, the regular green and the shadow green. You can fix that by having multiple lights in front of you. So casting shadows in various different directions to kind of even it out. You can also fix it by having a light above, below, or to the sides of the green screen that's behind you shining onto the green screen. 
So this will take away the shadows and make the green behind you very bright so it's even easier to separate. This is why it's very important to get some sort of material that doesn't have much of a reflection to it. So some sort of soft fabric or one of these green screen materials that's built specifically not to have reflections. Don't worry too much about this if you just want to casually use a green screen in meetings or just make some fun iMovie videos. But if you're looking just to make it a little bit better, some lighting will go a long way. And it doesn't have to be super expensive lighting either. There's a lot of cheap options available on Amazon. Or you can just use regular lamps. Really, any kind of lighting is better than no lighting. And finally, I know people are going to ask me about my green chair. My green chair is actually a regular black office chair, but it's a high back so you can see it over my shoulders. So something like that may not be a problem in a meeting. I mean, people assume that you're sitting in a chair. But I certainly thought it was a good idea to try to get rid of the chair when making videos like this. So to do that, you can just throw a piece of green fabric over the chair. But I also found that pretty cheaply on Amazon, you could find these stretch chair cover. Just search for stretch office chair cover. And you'll find them in a variety of different colors. Look for the ones that cover a chair similar to yours and have lots of different colors. And then if you look at the colors, you usually find ones that are various shades of green and such. And then it will help you blend your chair into the green screen behind it. And that's it. A green screen is really nothing other than any piece of green material that you can put behind you. You can make it a little bit better with lighting. And you can use it in iMovie, other video editing apps, and in online meetings. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.